we want this to be kind of a how-to, just in case someone finds themselves in a position of dissecting a brain. How do you think about the act of dissecting a brain, or have you done it so many times that you don't give it any thought at all? It's just another brain to take apart. I always give it thought. Okay. I, I revel in looking at brains, and I'm always thankful that I have the opportunity to do it. It's never something to be taken lightly. But there are many ways to look at a brain. And, and it's not, you know, you can look at a lot just by looking at out the outside of the brain. There's a lot here. There is a ton here. These are all cranial nerves. These are blood vessels. There are parts to the brain. There are structures that are, you know, interesting here um, that do different things. There's different parts. This is the frontal cortex, the parietal cortex, the temporal and occipital cortex. Um, this is something called the Sylvian fissure, which I can pry apart, and it separates the temporal lobe from the parietal and frontal lobe, and if you look down in there, there's more cortex. Do you see that? Ah, I see. There's more surface. Right. And that's called the insular lobe by many people. The insula. In the, yeah, yeah. Yes. insular cortex, insular right. lobe. Right. And so, you know, there's a lot of things you can do at different levels. Professor Leonard White over at uh, Duke. Duke, he has uh, one of his videos, he talks about his favorite brain parts. You got a favorite, any favorites? I have a fa favorite cranial nerve. A favorite cranial nerve. What might that be? Okay, let's see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah. Um there it is. I love you. Becky Mason's favorite cranial nerve. And which of the 12 is that? It's four. You see this? See that tiny little nerve? It's the trigeminal? No. No. Which one is that? Five is big. This is four. This is trochlear. Trochlear, okay. Do you see it? Uh, yeah, yes. It, it comes out. So it's coming out from the dorsal surface. And what does it's the... It's right here. And what is it's the trochlear? It's the only one that comes from the back instead of the front. So it oh. takes a long and torturous journey. It's small and vulnerable. <laughs> and it innervates one muscle, the superior oblique. The superior oblique that moves your eyes. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. And it's, you know... Easily hurt, so I like it. <laughs> it's my favorite curve. Okay. <laughs> There's no particular orientation whence to begin the dissection. You don't start again. From the there top are many, of... many different dissections. Okay. This is a beautiful cut. Ooh, wow. That is a beautiful cut. Now this is uh, almost a whole brain, but what's different here is that it got cut in the middle. Here it got cut back in the medulla, which is the back, back part of this brainstem. This got cut in the pons. So this is all the pons, and the pons is married to the cerebellum. Do you see that? Yep. They're married. Yep. They will. The cerebellum doesn't exist if the pons doesn't exist, and the pons doesn't exist if the cerebellum doesn't exist. In fact, there was a 23-year-old Chinese woman who went to the doctor because... Do you remember what her... Her problem was, I think she was vomiting or something. But she goes to the doctor and she, you know, she learned to speak late. She learned to walk late, blah, blah, blah. But no one ever thought anything about it. She got married. She had some kids. She goes to the doctor, 23. They, they see that she has some issues. They do a brain scan and they realize she has zero. Not, not a little one, but zero cerebellum. No cerebellum. There are, I think, nine reported cases of a cerebellar genesis so no cerebellum generated from the get-go her pons was very small because she had none of this because this is this this guy's reason for living is this if you don't have that you don't get that she didn't have this and she didn't have the blood vessels that go to it the thing that you would think about right you should be thinking about movement and she did have problems with movement hmm. balance problems with balance and then, more popularly, we've thought about the, a role for cerebellum in disorders such as autism. And uh, she was, 
if she was on the autistic spectrum is a little unclear to me, but she certainly was a very functioning person with a with recording no life. 